Well, I'm Richard Graffin. Uh, about six weeks ago, uh, I made a video on how I broke down some logs and rough turned them into, I think it was about 27 bowls. Uh, now, looking at these a couple of days ago, I found that some had walked a little bit further than I was expecting, and what I thought was Manchurian pear turned out to be loquat, and uh, so that would have different characteristics uh, when it came to walking and things like that. Um, so what you're going to see in this video is uh, what happens to these bowls next. It's now January the 4th and this was turned uh, 1122 and I seem to remember it was about the third week in November. Um, so this has moved quite a bit so we'll just see how much. That's uh, 191 by 18 and uh, which is seven and one eighth inches uh, by seven and a half. Um, so uh, that might be uh, difficult to get a bowl out of to the full height for what's happened on the bottom. So uh, that's 194, sorry not 194, 94 by the look of it, uh, 94 to Oh, 89, 88, something like that. So anyway, it's gone a bit oval. So this is going into um, Vicmark step jaws. And obviously they're not going to grip all the way around. You can see where they gripped originally. Um, I might just get them back in there. The whole thing's gone slightly D-shaped because the center, the pith, is slightly off center. Therefore, uh, this has shrunk a bit more than that. Get in the jaws and uh, do a little trial run. Let's see where we are. So I get a very thin bowl out of that by the look of it, uh, without losing too much height. So just make sure it's tight in the chuck. And I'm going to use the uh, half inch spindle gouge, so that's what came to hand. So just going to skim off the top with using really just to the right of the nose of the tool, just ease it through an arc as soon as possible. I can hear that running, the top's running pretty true, skimmed it off, a little bit left there, but so. bit there. And I can feel pretty much where the edge is there so uh, that's what I can get out of that bowl so that's good. So the next thing to do is to um, get a shoulder on the inside so I can expand some jaws. Now I could possibly use those, yep. The wider I <coughs> can grip it, then the better the grip I've got. And uh, I just true up the inside as well. The three eighths deep clean bowl gouge. The tool starts on its side. Easy to Little catch. And you use a three quarter inch square end scraper, just bring it up a wee bit. Um, I'm going to put a shoulder in there. And that really is just so the bigger jaws line up with it. I uh, don't really need to worry with the rest at this stage. Um, no, it'll be fine. And now I'm going to do the four bowls I've got like this so you can see what happens to each one. I don't know if you've got others which are, have a bit more of a problem. This does look like a bit more of a problem so we'll see what happens. 
Now I can shift this quite a long way in the jaws just because the base has gone um, so oval. So I'll try and get it in the middle of the oval. Not looking, not looking fantastically hopeful at the moment. Where we are there. No, no, no. So I'm going to have to take take a bit off this um, just to reduce the height. I'm going to take this one off with the um, with the wing of the bowl guard, as, as uh, just with the the steeper right wing of the asymmetric ground. Bowl guard. I've just got my hand on the rest, just pushing the tool forward, easing it forward. Hmm. It's going to be a pretty thin bowl, uh, a very thin bowl. So. Um, and really, the t yeah, I've just got to go down a bit deeper, unfortunately. So I'm losing a bit of height on this bowl. And I think that will probably be sufficient. Here we are here. Oops, a bit further out. Yep, that looks much better. Sounds much better anyway. Yep. Good. And well, six weeks ago this was soaking wet. And it really feels quite dry now. It is high summer, so uh, the air's been pretty dry a lot of the time. Groove in there for the chuck. I've just put in another one way inside in case I need one for the, uh, the jaws I'm using at the moment, which is the, the smaller shark jaws. Right, so there's two balls I'm going to get a bowl from. Well, this one's walked quite a bit more. Three-edge bull gouge. Well, if I'd known this was going to walk like this, I'd have finished the bowls green in the first place. It's got just the kind of amount of warp I like. Mm. I'll put that down to me being out of practice. The reason it was catching was because uh, the uh, a slightly pronounced nose on this gouge at the moment and I just didn't have it rolled over quite far enough. So, right over. I'm sorry to block your view but I need a good grip on that. This feels a bit harder than Manchurian Pear too. Quote. 
doesn't need much of a shoulder just to stop the jaws sliding around too much there's a split which is a bit irritating um, but I it's only a small split so I can probably live with that and uh, fill it with black epoxy and the fourth over a bit so it's the oval is central in the jaws oh, it looks quite wild this one that too. Right, so from there we go to uh, reversing these bowls onto a uh, onto a larger chuck. So this bowl, um, basically, I'm going to hang the bowl uh, on the show using the shoulder. Just get it on top of the jaw. It'll just rock around very slightly there, and then I can just cinch that up. And that's running. Well, it's really the rim which is the important but that's running pretty well true so put this out speed goes down to start with the new project and I can turn it up until it's um, yeah, it's fine probably running about 1200 or so and I'm going to use as always a half inch spindle gouge just to take off all the rough stuff just using the just to the left wing of the nose of the tool. And there, rather than moving further out here, I'm just swinging around on the nose of the tool so it comes into a shear cut with the bevel rubber. Have shifted. I didn't have it quite as true as I thought, so I'll just adjust that again. Oh, that's definitely not right. Right, I've got the correct contact all the way around that time, so didn't get it quite right the first time. So, I've got a little bit more to take off than I thought. Irritating, but it shows you what can go wrong. And you get to see that cut again now. Coming out the outside much, don't disintegrate the, uh, don't splinter away the, the rim to come in. And this way. And I'm now down to uh, what looks like about you know, not much over a quarter of an inch thick, so it's getting fairly, uh, fairly thin in there, not a lot to play with. And uh, need to trap the foot, line the bevel up. Direction I want to go, raise the handle, pivot the tool into pivot the tool into the wood. On its side at the end, just open it up a little bit and squeeze back. 
Is that, is that running true? This bowl is... Um, I'll probably turn the foot off eventually. But, uh, so that's the wing of the tool. The tool's more or less on its side. Bring the tool in, flued up, guaranteed catch. The ball will be over your shoulder. Well, that's not cutting because I've honed this edge. There's a little micro bevel there and it's just difficult to get the cut. So I'm going to use the um, 3 8 spindle gouge. Slightly undercut, which it is, and that little careless catch I just had, which you might have missed, or maybe not, that just tore that edge out. And uh, I'll just see how we're going for a um, for a foot here. I need to get my some dividers. for the. Uh, Step jaws. I should have those already set. Yes, I have. So that's where center is. I want center between the two points, and the I'm going to make a mark with the left point so it mark lines up with the right. about the quickest way I know of finding centre. This doesn't actually look too bad for foot so it might just work to that for the moment. The ribs come up a bit. And this is a 3-8 spindle guard, which is what I normally use in this situation. Maybe not quite as long a bevel as this one but about approaching 30 degrees quite long. Now and now take a shear cut up here with the uh, deep fitted bowl gouge. The rest comes down a little bit. Asymmetric bowl gouge means I've got a fairly steep uh, right wing um, and that means that allows me to get in fairly comfortably here. I want it cutting at about centre height. where the shaving is coming off. Off the shiny bit. Just to the right of the nose. And you can see the difference in the cut. out a little bit there. Now getting a grip underneath the rest so that I can pull the tool down a bit more. As I come round, I've got that lump of material about to be used, um, about to go, and I'm going to keep that, um, and I'll just leave some beads proud on this bowl, and so to come down on the top of that, finger underneath the rest, pulling the tool down, then I can ease the tool forwards, and that gives me a nice controlled cut much more than if I've got my hand over the top. Now what I want is to have the curve flowing through underneath the bead. So I need to go just a little bit steeper. Up 
and the un underside and I'm going to do that with the uh, with the shear scraper this time use flat initially just gently stroke the surface and that's, that's vibration you hear uh, so I might be just going a little bit too hard I'm just going to hone that up there's a separate video I've just made on that how to hone to get a good side view of the tool of the hone in action Little wispy bits coming off now coming up here I've got a slight dip on this if you like there and I need to take that away I'm going to tilt the tool up so I can shear scrape right into the corner underneath the bead. What I might construe as a lump there so that comes off. And I'm looking at the top horizon as I do that. as opposed to the bottom horizon down there. Alright, so that will be the top of the bead. Any a bead is in fact. I was wondering about a band rather than little curved beads on this one. Now to define a bead, it's really nice if you can just get slightly underneath it. So when you look at it, it makes it easy to sand. And when you look at it from the side, uh, there's no hint of a corner. Because that's kind of tucked in underneath the bead. I'm going to do the same on the top. Rolling the tool over to use the side just for a very gentle shear scrape. Now, the bead, it, it's really going to be a, a kind of widely, slightly curved bead. And it just means that when you pick the bowl up afterwards, it will just be a little bit easier because it's got that. Um, bit to stop your fingers sliding, <coughs> or the bowl sliding through your fingers. Now I'm going to keep this little foot, almost back the bead, using the left wing just to stroke the surface. Across the bottom it is slightly concave, now I'm going to do that with the shear scraper flat on the rest before you get more better surface. I'm going to go gently enough. Now I'm a bit thin. It's a nice smooth surface now. I've also taken a chunk out of the side of the, uh, the scraper here. It's got a rounded side, so take a chunk out. That means I've got a nice sharp corner. Yeah, it's a nice sharp corner cut me somewhere. Yeah. It's nice to have a bit of colour in the video, isn't it? Maybe not that colour. But... So, that will now get sanded. Oh, it looks pretty good. It's almost good enough just to leave like that, but um, we've got a few little bits of, uh, of uh, raised grain up there that'll sand easily. So, start off with uh, 180 grit. Hold it in three. I need a plaster on that. 
So, background's all very well having a bit of colour, but maybe some DNA on the bowl, but I don't really want it. So, 180 grit. Always got to watch those sharp corners. Screen is picked up very slightly there. I can just see it. So when you're hand sanding, if you've got reverse, paste it in reverse. So that the little fibers which have just stuck their heads up and have been brushed this way, they get brushed the other way, and they come out pretty quickly. You know, I'll use a rotary sander for 400 grit. wax on this. It's a fairly hard timber, the low quat, so dense and uh, the wax will melt into the wood. And this bowl gets washed up. If I hope it'll be used, then uh, the wax will come off and the wood will take on a different patina. is now ready for hollowing. Uh, before I do that one I'll uh, do the outsides of the other bowls and then uh, I get into a bit of a rhythm. had this bowl on once and uh, unfortunately forgot to turn the camera on so you missed a lot of interesting stuff for that. Um, the main feature was it had a split here which went down so the foot was nearly twice the height um, but I've come down into here uh, I, I had one cut with the gouge around there as you've just seen um, and then I was going to come in on this with a uh, uh, with the sheer scraper just flat as this uh, the low quat seems to scrape it. Oh, that's, uh, that's really good. Um, low quat seems to scrape fairly well. And sometimes that can get kicked out because I had a shaving in or I didn't. You know, all kinds of reasons I might not have had it in absolutely straight the first time. Well, I don't know what that was, but it's running true now. So. so with this bowl, the foot is going to come off because it's split. And I'll never see any point in making a bowl with a split if you can avoid it. Just 
so I'm coming around there there's just nothing happening on that edge so it uh, just needs touching up difference. This has got a bit of an angle here at the moment so I'm just going to ease the corner of this in and leave a, another kind of bead or decoration or something like that. Coming in from the other side, I'm going to do that with uh, spindle gouge. It's got a slightly steeper bevel than the other one I was using on the base. Um, got the trajectory wrong there. So just bring the, the uh, camera around so you can see what's happening. So the problem is that uh, this curve essentially kind of comes in a bit and that one is a, a bit kind of bulbous. So uh, what I need to do, and I think I've got enough wood in there, yes I've got heaps. Um, so I can take quite a bit out of this area um, and get it to line up with that. And I'll probably flatten that a bit or I can change the angle of that. Uh, and that'll just leave you with a slightly higher bead. So I'm going to do that, and um, I'm going to do that with the... I'll come up from the bottom first with the bowl gouge. Three-inch bowl gouge. driving a car I always think you're uh, you look at the bit of the road you're about to drive on but you don't actually get there for a few seconds so I'll walk around to the front look at look at what I've got to do and come back here and try and do it this time using the um, the 3 8 spindle guard Side at the end at the bottom of the bead, and so I go in underneath the bead. Right, pretty well there. Good. So now I'm back to my shear scraper again. Nothing happening there, but just nice and sharp just there. Turn with a course of stone, it's about 300 grit. So it's much better. Mm. Oh, and that's not looking too bad. Mm. Mm. This time we'll cover, put a couple of rounded beads on this one. So the three eight spindle gouge with a pretty long bevel, probably around 30 degrees. And so I'm going to 
have my finger on the rest so it's not doing me as a kind of little fulcrum for it. Drop the handle, pivot the edge in, along the rest a bit, and drop the handle again, and then come to the opposite, moving the rest so I can get underneath it. And on the side and just drop the handle and ease it around. And my kind of uh, approach to cutting beads is um, have them different sizes and then they don't have to match. Come in a little bit more there. That's it. Now I'm going to come in on the top of that bead so that I'm undercutting it very slightly. Just to give it more definition and the same this side. Right, so it's a teeny, oh, a bit feathery there, so just come back and into there and then just tweak it sideways. Right, so I won't bore you with the sanding, um, I'll sand that uh, and then we'll come back a bit later and see the foot being taken off. Number three bowl, um, looking at it, uh, this is the one with the split on the inside and somewhere just now I just saw a split on the outside as well, a teeny little split. It'll come up if it's there. So, as usual with the uh, half inch spindle gouge Foot cut first. You can hear round into the shear cut. Save moving the rest. Just ease it out a bit, take that in two. And get the bottom down. a bit high there, but uh, I'll just turn that to fit the uh, fit the chuck. Still a little bit to go there, a little bit to go there. That'll probably all come out with the uh, finishing cut. We'll see how we go. So back to the 3 8 bowl gouge again. Little knocking there means I haven't quite got the, uh, the original surface going yet. Very convenient for my fingers. I normally would have the dust extraction going here, um, but um, it's more important really for you to hear the sound of the cutting.
that looks without getting in the way of the camera. Right, well it's a clean cut anyway. And uh, the curve isn't too bad. You need a little bit lump there. Um, yep, that would sand all right. I'll probably, I'm probably going to go over it with a uh, with shear scraping. This has been to the grinder since I used it last, so it's got a nice fresh edge on it. Just drop the rest a little bit so there's a uh, better angle. I really want it to be less than 90 degrees between the top of the tool and the scraper. So you get that the negative rake. And coming around the top, I'm going to tilt the tool up on edge if it's less aggressive. Right, that would be good, and I've got oh, quite a bit of timber in there, so uh, I'll put a couple of beads in. Using the uh, 3 8 spindle gouge with a long bevel, and so I'm getting a bit deeper into the wood. We'll put it somewhere around here. If you want to see what it'll look like, then you can kind of play around with do you want beads there? No, you don't like the look of those and you can try them up here. Uh, it's quite quite a good way so you don't commit yourself too early. Uh, just take those off so not to distract. Yep, it'll do. And come down to the foot. Well, I might take the foot off, but uh, I finish it now. At least I can keep it if it looks okay. And across the bottom with the shear scraper flat. Flat on the rest, tilted down. And just make sure that's uh, slightly concave, yep. And then I can ease the short the corner in and just get a little bit of decoration in there. But again, I won't. Oh, I forgot to look for the split, which is there. Very irritating. Um, I think I'm inclined to sand that. Uh, now I'm just going to finish the bowl and uh, see what that looks like a bit later. I might just be able to leave that or I'll rub some... Uh, some epoxy in there with some uh, black dust in it and uh, I'll leave that until later anyway. So again I won't bore you with the sanding. Bowl number four. Let's drop the base first. Usually a good idea so that 
if the whole thing comes off or anything you, at least you've got a foot which will uh, allow you to get it back on all nice and central sounds a bit slow round and into the push cup. This is a very short tool so I've got a pretty good grip on it on the uh, on the rest. bit more to go there split oh, and little micro splits I can barely barely see them all the way across there and oh, that's not a good sign so I want to take all those off and I'm going to mark where they are they come up to that and they're below that line and they're in that area so I'm going to take those away and then you come down to about there where they were and I can't feel anything it's a pretty good cut and uh, I can't see or feel anything um, what I am worrying about now is how thick the wall is Ah, plenty, good. Well, plenty just there, maybe because I haven't trued the inside out yet, I'll just try elsewhere as well. A little bit thinner there, that's still okay. Right, that bit's okay, get a foot on it. Again, to fit the large, the large step in the... Um, in step jaws. Three eight spindle gouge. You'll come up with it in speed, huh? Just straight in at this stage. Down here with the rest in this position, I'll do the bottom. Rest just a shade high. I could have cut it, but I'd have been leaning much further over the rest than I needed to. Just use the corner to decorate the bottom. Now, coming round the side, uh, I'm going to keep the uh, diameter up there. We'll just see, we'll see what comes. Um, this is going to start the cut at the bottom. Use the deep fluted 3 8 deep fluted ball gouge, steep wing, remember, so I can get in tight, and the rest is just a little bit high.
Right, so there's a bit of a lump there. The easiest way to take that out really is uh, with a scraper. like that grabbing sound there, that's usually a sign of oops, camera being a bit friendly. Yep, that little tearing sound was that. So if I want to know where to look for that, when I've cleaned it up, it's in there. Gone. Right, the camera's far too friendly where it is, so I'm going to have to move it. Right, so you still get a good view of what's happening. Uh, I'll leave this mass for the moment. Uh, come in from the uh, from the top. I've got about half an inch thickness to play with, about 15 millimetres. So. Now that curve just coming in a little bit tight. Uh, so if I flatten it slightly here, that'll give it a different angle going through the bead. That's not doing very much. Sorry, that's out of sight. It's much easier to hold it up against the chest. That vibration just means I'm going a little bit too hard. Too much pressure against the wood. Right, so uh, let's change the angle. <coughs> Take away that little lump. the top can come down a bit. This is using the wing of the tool. That's not actually cutting as cleanly as this will. I just want to shade hard. The difference when you're shear scraping with the tool flat on the rest or tear it up a bit is that there's a lot less uh, contact, uh, metal contact with the wood. So the best illustration is really with my finger. So if you... Uh, one I normally use is bandaged. Um, if you try and just brush your finger 
past the edge without distorting the skin, it's extremely difficult. You go from almost no contact to really quite a bit. Whereas if you tilt the tool up on edge, you only have two or three millimeters in contact. And that's why when you're in here, if the wood bounces around, you're going to grab quite a bit of the wood, have quite a bit of contact. Whereas if you tilt it up on edge, it's never going to be more than a couple of millimeters. I'm going to use it flat to get in there and then we'll just attempt to leave it. I quite like these broad bands but just take it around in a circle here and in little one underneath a slightly bigger one just stroke the edge Oh, that was terribly careless of me, so there's a little line there. So having taken that away, that's not quite right. Right, and I think I got away with that. Oh, and the foot needs attention, so tool right on its side on the top of the foot, in, rotate it slightly clockwise, anti clockwise, stroke the other bit with the, the left wing, and I'll save you watching the sanding. So here we are with the outsides done, and now I'll readjust the camera so you can see the inside being hollowed. So the hollowing, I'm going to do most of this with a 3 8 deep fluted bowl gouge. Once you've got the bevel rubbing then you can rotate it slightly. First, there's still a little bit of chattering in there from uh, this bit, which hasn't been, uh, which is still the original surface. Doesn't feel too thin in there, fortunately. go all the way into the centre with a gouge. Uh, I usually do that with a scraper. And that was just a, the rest gave way there. Now that was just a kind of sweeping cut, didn't have the bevel rubbing. Need a bit more out of here. Just come up a fraction of speed. So I'm running at 1200. Sounds good, but there's a slight kind of chatter where my thumb is. I'm always very wary of coming too near the rim with a big heavy scraper because the wood's beginning to be a little bit flexible 
and as, was, as I was explaining earlier on with, with the uh, trying to brush this, my finger with the edge of the tool without distorting the skin um, for that reason if you do need to come right up to the edge then it pays really to tilt the tool up on edge and shear straight I'm not trying sure to do that there but that just shows you chatter there was there is gone Let's see if there are any other nasty little surprises little splits no nope. so that could come down a bit where my thumb is uh, I'll just have a, have a look I would say that's about half an inch thick at the moment oh, a little bit less but uh, I can take at least an eighth of an inch out of that, about three or four millimetres. Nothing like a bit of commitment. That really is quite hard. I'm not even going to the middle with the square end. Where are we? Hustle it away and come back with a big this uh, 35 millimeter by nine inch. So it's fairly heavy. in terms of coming off the bend just continuing that curve around into the bottom The wood's moving so slowly near centre. Let's just see how we go for depth. So I can put the ruler against the jaws of the chuck, and that kind of squares it up, and I've got. 75 millimeters there, which is about three inches, and I've got uh, 68 there, so I've got eight millimeters, which is um, about three eighths of an inch, and so I can go down another eighth of an inch, another couple of millimeters. So, oh, picked up a one inch uh, scraper. That's a lot better. So anyway, I've, I can see how far down I've got to go. So I've gone down the depth I need to. And I can swing that around. Alright. want is a curve, a radius here on the end of the tool which is just inside really the, the curve I'm trying to cut. I could do all this with um, with a long narrow round nose but it's so difficult to get the curve you want I find compared to when you have the tool almost the right shape for the curve. Right in the middle a little kind of bump
So that feels fine. Have a look at it. A few little kind of haven't cut particularly cleanly up in there. There's a bit of picked up grain in the end grain. If there is this on one side, it'll be on the other. Soon taken care of with power sanding. Just what I'll do. So I use an angle drill and I'll go into it first with uh, 120 grit. And I will have the dust extractor on. torn up a little bit in there. Yeah. Didn't notice before. So in this case I had the, the the wheels going round that way so I've got the the wood coming on into the end of the wheel so it's, it's pretty aggressive um, but it still hasn't quite got rid of that that's really started to look a little bit kind of torn there so I can just lock the spindle and uh, get at it like that um, if you've got a pistol grip drill, uh, the more conventional type. I don't actually have a, a sander in it, but uh, you have to use both hands. Much more difficult to control, but if that's what you've got, that's what you use. a little bit more up near the rim. Now what I have to be careful of near the rim is just pulling the sander around. Same with hand sanding really. It's uh, very easy to just round the rim over so you really want to concentrate on keeping your hand sanding that surface then that surface and that way you'll keep a nice crisp angle so that's looking pretty good and I now go on so that was the 120 uh, I'll just do the same now with the 180 uh, and the 240 and I'm finishing these bowls with uh, a 320 so uh, I'll just go through that which should take a couple of minutes and uh, then I'll be back with you and on the inside, I'm going to finish with uh, a bit of board linseed oil. Um, just ready to see what the difference is on the outside, but uh, I'm pretty casual about finishing. Uh, most of my stuff is designed to be used, and so I want to finish which is, comes off fairly easy. And I hate shiny. Or maybe I should say high gloss. Right, that looks good to me. So 
Oh, one bowl, the foot will be coming off later. So this was the bowl with the split in it and there's one just there, barely barely discernible. Uh, in the end I filled it with, uh, I just ran some thin super glue in there and sanded it and it's come out as a little black line. But once this darkens up with age and use, uh, you really won't see that. So that came out pretty well. Uh, the little split I filled with uh, epoxy and it's um, pretty well vanished, uh, fortunately. And uh, that looks all right, probably just like that. And on to bowl number three. Uh, this was the one which had the, uh, the split in the foot. And the foot doesn't fit the chuck, doesn't really matter because it's going to come off. So that's the fourth bowl done. Nothing exciting there, just more of the same. And the proportions are really quite nice, so I think I'll just keep the foot on that one. Um, but I need to turn the feet off a couple of others, so uh, we'll sort that one out. Uh, I'm going to mount them broadly between centres. Um, this is some non-slip cloth overlapping the corner of some MDF uh, with a recess in the bottom so that goes on the chuck but not this chuck bit. So that's a small offcut of MDF uh, with a small hole drilled through the middle and, and I can then put that over there. I don't really want a hole from the tail centre in the middle so I can see where centre is, there's still a teeny mark there left, left over, so I can line the tail centre up, back that off a little bit, pop that in, now it's very slightly out, so I can just tap it away. Groaning a little bit. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's slightly out because the um, uh, I was going to make this round bottom, so um, I'll get a shorter rest. I don't need all that rest in there. And so I'm basically going to turn all this away. Um, using uh, a half inch spindle, uh, three inch spindle guard, it's my usual tool for the job. That's just the wood protecting, protecting a bit. Right, I'm going to turn the, turn that bit of MDF round. As I do that, as I take the corners off, It's not going to be supporting the wood so well. So that noise should go in just a second. When I think about this, I don't know why I'm bothering with this, because I'm taking the whole foot off. So I can just bring the tail centre up. No noise. Rest the shade high. Uh, don't want to be cutting way above centre. Here, it's going to be a slight bit of run out. There'll be a, a variation in colour where 
the two surfaces don't quite meet and you expect a bit of kind of oscillation which there is but sanding will take care of all that now do I want a rounded base or a slightly rounded uh, rounded to a so it's, it's slightly concave in the centre should have measured this before but uh, I think I'm okay right now a little shear cut Taking that little central bit down to almost nothing. So it's slightly, very slightly undercut. So this bowl will actually fit on at about, uh, put a pencil mark, it's going to sit about there. There we sound back. Grid to forty. To three twenty. Now I've still got that teeny bit of wood, which is um, between the point of the tail centre and the. Uh, and the bowl, if you can just about see it, so that's too short now for me to do what I need to. Very useful to have a range of rest sizes. Now I've got the longer bevel uh, 3 8 spindle gouge here. And the idea is to cut in almost the same angle as the uh, as the cone in the centre. Now, this is a cross grain bowl, so the grain running across here it means that if you push hard, you can just kind of shift the grain so it's like almost like a geological fault so what i aim to do uh, is as i stop the lathe i'm going to have the tool resting in there and just give it a little shove and that should split along the grain and not leave me much finishing to do right it was a bit too aggressive so I've still got a little bit there. There's a bit of oil on that. And that's come out pretty well. That one I quite like with its foot. Uh, provides a little bit more, but I can easily take it off the same way uh, as I could with the other two. So I'll change my mind on this one. I think it'll look better with out of foot. So that's what's going to happen. Now this uh, bowl I'm just using the same bit of MDF um, which I used on the other one but it's reversed so it's not squeaking. Just true that up while I've got the opportunity. Probably taken the edge off the tool, but and then I just need to skim this bit off. And because I'm skimming, uh, I'm going to hone, just hone the edge. I don't normally do this with gouges unless I'm doing some sort of shear scrape. There's a teeny reverse curve there. Mm. 
Right, the groove hasn't gone. Only just a sheer scrape there. Eh? 180 grit. Yep, slight improvement, I think. Right, so that's that for those four bowls. So here's the group photo. The uh, round bottom bowl, slight dimple in the bottom. The one where the bottom turned off. And I decided as I was setting this up that this bowl really didn't need a foot either, so that's been removed as has the one on the smaller bowl. I think they both look a lot better for it.